Alrighty, so this hose right here we went ahead and took off. We've got our new orifice tube installed. Just need to slide it all the way in, test fit it uh, with this hose. And when this part goes all the way in, you'd know you've got your orifice tube correct. Um, just check your uh, uh, O-ring there as well. And the uh, connection point for this is right there. So 13 millimeter made it easier to uh, run an extension and a uh, and the ratchet and just pull out the headlights and so forth so we hadn't pulled off the dryer we'll clean off our surface areas there when I come back um, let's see you got a 10 millimeter bolt that holds that uh, cage in for the dryer and now we'll go back and look at oh, that's great <laughs> look at what we need to do here all right so we need to put one ounce of oil into our new dryer. Here's the old one. Came with this interesting uh, uh, material. We may try to reuse that. I'll blow it out here and <clears throat> go from there. Okay. It looks like we reuse this stud. It looks like. Huh. Okay. Got a little ounce cup here. This will be where we connect our switch. So I've got these Allen head pieces here just to keep it dry because all it is is desiccate. It just <clears throat> takes the moisture from your, uh, uh, collects the moisture from <clears throat> the, uh, the system. So we'll pull these out, pour our uh, fluid in and go from there. But uh, yeah, we've got a new, new uh, net here as well. So. We'll go ahead and get our old switch off and go from there. And then I'll probably probably pour in our fluid right here. So we just need one ounce of the PAG 46, which looks to be the equivalent of the ND8. So thankfully, I think we got, yeah, I got just about an ounce. I forgot that had a reading on the back. Cool. Has a really this free on. I, this is the most I've been uh, gotten into AC work, so it's kind of interesting. The uh, details and everything, but there's a look at our. So cleaning that hose out was definitely a good idea, and thankfully, you know, if there's any more stuff in the system, it, this will catch it. So that's that's a good thing. So, all right, I'm gonna finish this up. We're about uh, almost 12 o'clock now, so we need to. We've got thunderstorms rolling. Need to get this assembled so we can get the uh, evac on there or evap pump which is let's see there's the gauges up over there evap pump is right here so we need about two three hours to vacuum that down so time wise i think we're doing good so far hoping to get it wrapped up tonight and be able to work it monday and see how it does so hang in there all right so we have everything back together Show you the gauges here in a minute. Got all of our connections fitted there. Got everything tightened down here. Switches plugged back in. Electronics, all that. Let's see. Got our hose connected there to the new dryer. Got the orifice tube in where it's supposed to be. Low side, high side, blue, red. Thankfully, with a lot of these new fittings, um, the uh, especially with these gauges, they only fit on one way. So that really makes it <clears throat> easy not to mix it up. So what we've got here is a homemade evacuation pump, and we're going to let it run for about a half hour, and we'll turn it off, close the gauges, and we'll see if. Because this, that was not good. And not good at all. So anyways, what we're watching for is for this to continue to pull down. And a little hissing there. But, uh, this gauge should stay about right there, which it is. 
So we'll let it run for about a half hour. Then we'll uh, turn everything off. I believe my dad said close these valves. Uh, or just turn it off. I forget which one. I think just turn it off. And um, we'll check and see if it's holding pressure. So let it run here for a little while. See what it does. But yeah. So you're going to have a little oil from the pump be discharged from there. So put a little, little cloth there. And for doing the homemade stuff, you might have to have a few different fittings. But I believe Harbor Freight sells one of these as well. So we'll get it back down. Everything seems to be tight here. And hopefully in a couple hours or so, we can put Freon back in and see if all this work, uh, if I got it done correctly or <clears throat> if I made it work. So we'll, we'll see. But it definitely seemed to be pretty easy to uh, put that compressor in, got a new shirt on after Taco Bell. But uh, yeah, doing the work itself is, uh, is pretty easy on these vehicles. I would hate to do it on a front wheel drive vehicle, anything like that. But for here, uh, pretty easy setup. I'm real happy, especially since the Suburban, you know, basically the same setup. So, and to be corrected, it's 1.8 uh, pounds. A fluid which ends up you know still over a little bit over two pounds or a two yeah two cans of Freon's 24 ounces so it needs 1.8 pounds so just under 32 ounces is what it needs so anywho we're gonna go back together here and work on a couple of little projects while this works and go from there <laughs> 